So um, I thought, oh my God, I'm going to get a call on Monday. I know I'm going to get a call. I know I'm going to get a call. I got a call. <laughs> WCW calls me up. What are you doing? I go, what do you mean? Why are you putting him in that? It's, it's in his contract. I mean, Michael is a fight announcer. Okay. I have him doing it. Well, you got to make a decision. WCW, UFC, uh -huh. right? Okay. Um, I said, look, he's got three fights on his contract and uh, I got to have him finish all three events and then fine. No problem. This is after I talked to Michael and we agreed that would be the case. It would be very hard for Michael to have continued with the UFC the way it grew with everything else he had on his plate. Mm. So at that point, then I, I talked to the owner. I said, okay, I got to pull Michael. I want to be the announcer. Okay. I've got the media contacts you don't have because people were scared of the UFC back then. It was a spectacle. Now it's a mainstream sport. Weren't there like no weight classes at the time? There were no time limits, no weight classes. You had guys fighting 600 pounds. <laughs> in in like know, a gi sometimes. A gi, <laughs> no gi. Whatever. I'm sorry, but that sounds more entertaining to me. I want to watch that again. <laughs> it was more entertaining to some people in their minds at the time. It was also frightening to a lot of others. It never would have grown to work as today yeah. unless it got the rules and the refinement Sanctions. that it did. Yeah. It wasn't even called mixed martial arts to like six seven years in what, what was it called it was blood sport i mean it was like <laughs> what, what back then they would fight three times in a night okay the tournaments 